Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got three very interesting guitars today, but this one, let's start with this because it's kind of wrapping up the story of one that we saw a couple of weeks ago. They're still <laughs> sitting over there. But I decided to, you know, realize that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Two very rare guitars being for sale at the same time. One I purchased in really ridiculously clean shape. This other one is a, a bit of a road dog from the photos, but it happens to have the one piece that my other one is missing. So whether the one that I have right now actually left the factory with that particular tailpiece or not, we are finally going to have a perfect example. And that was the whole reason why I purchased this one. Because to tell you the truth, I really did not want this example otherwise, because I remember when it was first listed, I was like, who's gonna pay him anywhere close to that? It's all yellowed and not so nice. And to tell the truth, it wasn't actually even advertised correctly for the longest time on the reverb listing. So let's go ahead and open this up so we can finally figure out what I'm talking about here, just in case you don't watch every single episode. One, two, three, well, I guess our fourth one is missing. And a clasp on the back, that's an interesting case. Inside here, another very rare 25th anniversary Les Paul Custom. The only difference being this one's kind of a gold color now. <laughs> and that's simply because it was likely displayed it doesn't really smell like smoke, so it must have just been on display somewhere. So this used to be completely silver, so kind of like how Silver Burst turned green. This one's kind of a greenish gold hue. But this indeed does have the correct 25th anniversary tailpiece. So I contacted this shop at first. I was like, hey, can I just buy that tailpiece from you? I will pay you a ridiculous amount of money. They said no. So I said, understandable. Have a nice day. But then a day or two later, I made them an offer and then they were really stuck on their certain price and I really didn't want to pay that much. But once I unboxed that perfect one, it's like, ah, okay, I need to bite the bullet because the other thing this shop didn't know is that the tuners have been replaced. They should say Gibson and not be Schaller branded. Upon closer inspection on the workbench, there were a lot of replaced parts on this guitar, but thankfully, the one thing that I wanted was original. Once I make my review video, it'll be nice having one that's like perfect and one that's aged because I can show them side by side, and I can also have a 100% perfect collector's edition one. Because this one's beat up, it's got buckle rash, it's got a little bit of finish chipping here, no breaks, cracks, or repairs, and it's supposed to be original otherwise. So I'm super pumped to do this review and demo. I've got everything I need now. But before we move on to our other stuff, let's hear a word from our sponsor today. And the sponsor of today's episode is Donner. Donner is a seller on Amazon. They sell many music related items, including guitars. So they sent me three of their products to unbox today. And you guys do have a chance to win a mystery item from their shop. All you have to do, is I kind of like the way I did that last giveaway where I pick one random item and if you just happen to have chose that and you were the first one to have chose it, you will win. So our first one here is actually a pedal power supply kit. And this is something that I kind of need. So I'm really thankful that they sent this to me because I've been kind of experimenting with some pedals and like looper pedals and stuff and it requires a lot of power supplies. <laughs> so this is just like a, a giant power brick as far as what I understand. And you get all these little cables and you just plug them in like that and, you can, and it also has different power outages depending on what you need. So that's something practical, but this, this thing just made me go, ah, you gotta be kidding me. Somebody actually did this. <laughs> This is a guitar stool guitar stand combo. I've never seen this before, but when I saw it, I knew I wanted it. Oh man, what's even better? You don't even have to put it together yourself. So just like that, you've got a stool. Let's see how comfortable is this? It's not too bad. It's a little bit firm. I would prefer a little bit more cushioning, but they've got a little protruding spot right there for your foot. I would love to see them do like a fold out leg rest because you know, classical style guitars, they need that little thing right there. That'd be cool. But this little protrusion on the back, I mean, I guess you could use it as a foot rest if you wanted to, but it's intended. So when you're done playing guitar, you can put your guitar on it. Uh, a guitar stand stool combination. <laughs> nice. 
And our last item from Donner is a legitimate electric guitar. Now, we've covered similar guitars from other manufacturers on this channel quite heavily, so I'll be interested to see if these are worth the slight premium. Normally, these little cheap beginner kits, they get a measly little instrument cable, but that's 10 feet and it feels decent quality. Professional low noise instrument cable. Oh, 90 degree angle jack too. I needed one of those for SGs. So far, pretty happy with that. Sometimes these freebie straps, they kind of have like a plastic feel to it. I mean, this is like a legitimate seatbelt style ones. How's our gig bag? Any padding? Um, not much. What guitar did they send me? Cause I did not get to choose. It looks like it's a, a creamy Olympic white. If I were to guess, this is probably an S type guitar. But hey, first impressions here. That's actually surprisingly pretty good. It's an HSS style, so not just your regular Stratocaster. I don't think we have any fancy electronics here, but it does appear to uh, move pretty smoothly. Rosewood fretboard on here, or at least something very similar to that. Now I'm scared Donner might get in trouble with their headstock styles, <laughs> because that is very close to the Fender one. But hey, if you're looking for that style, I mean, it's available right now. The back of the neck, it's still pretty chunky chunky in the fact that it's rounded but, but not quite a true baseball bat so not quite as big as the other ones we were talking about but still fairly substantial especially right here and it's got that satin finish on the back whereas the body itself is gloss and now straight out of the box the action is a little bit too high in my opinion so like all these starter kits you'll likely have to do some sort of a setup <laughs> two more to unbox today. These are both kind of within the new Guitar Day program. One is a forwarding service. Somebody in the UK fell in love with something. And this one, I guess it's kind of a new Guitar Day program. It's an AMS exclusive guitar and I had purchased one from AMS, but it was a pre-order. And we've kind of been waiting for that to show up. But then this one showed up on Reverb and it was such a fan fantastic example. I wanted to document it, so I reached out to the guy that reserved one. I asked him, do you want this one? Because I cannot guarantee that that brand new one will look anywhere near as nice as this. And he was totally down for that, so unfortunately I had to cancel the AMS order on this one because this is a just the best example I've ever seen of one of these. And the reason why it didn't sell sooner is the guy didn't even list it correctly on his reverb listing. He had it in the description, but that doesn't help him as much as having it all in the title. He just had like, uh, I think he said 2018 Gibson Les Paul. It's like, uh, okay, well, you're gonna scare some people away not telling them the rest of the story. They'll think it's some freaky modified thing because this is an interesting guitar. Take a look at this thing. They're kind of interesting cases, a limited edition thing. This was initially like an early 2000s model that AMS had them reissue just for them. So what is inside of here? It's a Gibson Les Paul Voodoo. What an interesting guitar here. So what makes this thing special? is instead of having like a maple top and a mahogany body, it's all swamp ash. And this particular example had a lot of eye wood grain formations, and that's what I particularly love about these. We also have a really killer back, but what sold it for me is the figuring on the neck. Most of them will have some sort of flame figuring, but this one was so heavy. It's like, I cannot guarantee that the brand new one will have anything like this, man. So this will make a fantastic review and demo piece. I mean, it is just a beautiful example of one of these. And it did turn out to be a 2019 example. This guy probably bought it in 2018 though, because that's a very early serial number under the 2019 moniker. But other than some picking marks here that will likely polish out, this thing is pretty much in brand new shape. So we will get this review and demo done soon because we need to get that sent off. And our last one for today, I would love to take the time to review and document this one, but I've already done this model in a roundabout way. Not this particular one, but a slightly higher classed one. 
But this was that one finish that I said, you know, I would review and document it, but I'm just so far backed up with reviews. I can't wait to be caught up. Nice, double boxing. That's going to help me because this has to be shipped off to the UK here in a minute. But inside here is a particular Fender model that is considered like one of the best Stratocasters you can buy on the used market. And it's from like the 90s era. But let's go ahead and uh, see what is inside of this thing. The good old red Fender logo there. That's how you know it's a 90s case. One, two, three, four. I can't wait to see this one. Interesting. Okay, so the photos of these always made that black center look a lot more deep, but I guess it's just kind of like a light blue that transitions into a dark blue. So the story on this one is someone in the UK saw this and they wanted it. But unfortunately, when they contacted the seller, they're like, I'm sorry, I don't want to ship internationally. So they told him, don't worry, I've got a plan. So then they contacted me because I'm like a helpful middleman within the US. I mean, if you need something in any other country, I do charge a fee for this service and all the risks and everything are completely on you. But yes, I can help you get it there. I cannot help with sites, paperwork or anything. But this is a Strat Plus. It appears to actually be in really good shape. It has that very distinct 90s Fender glue case smell to it. Looks like a small pocket crack right there, but I think we knew about that one and the other one's good. So at least it's not the one that you normally see. But I did the review of the Strat Ultra, which was a version of this that had a flame maple veneer top and the back. This is the slightly lower end version, but super cool finish on this one. I forget what it's called right now, so I'll have to put it up here on the screen. But yeah, I just thought it like disappeared into a black hole, but in person it's more so just a really deep, vibrant blue. So maybe not quite as cool as I thought it was going to be, but still a very nice guitar if you love that blue color. And hey, we even still have the original bar as well as the strap. So I think this is a fantastic one. So the only thing left to do is uh, repack this back up and ship it off to the UK. up here we have to say goodbye to one of our consignment pieces. You know I was not looking forward to this one as much as I was the single cut but in the end I think this is the one that surprised me the most because I'm normally not the biggest fan of the whole double cut shape but this finish matched with that little vibrola bar right there. This thing was a lot of fun and it was a more tonally diverse thing. Ultimately I would still prefer the single cut but those single cuts can get rather expensive. So hey if you don't mind the double cut shape you can definitely get a lot of bang for your buck but if you're like me and prefer the single cuts yeah you're gonna have to pay a little bit more for those single cut melody makers. Next up to pack here, this guitar. You know, it was just surprise central. I had just purchased it because, you know, people want Les Paul Customs in my shop, right? But when I got it, we found out it was actually a Kalamazoo build, which is pretty rare for 1976. I mean, we're not talking unheard of rare. It's just kind of hard to tell from just photos because you gotta be able to look at things like the side marker inlays and some of the other specs that can be hard to see in most sellers' photos. But what threw me for such a loop on this guitar when I tore it apart, you know, to clean it up a little bit, is the neck tenon on this. This is part of a really transitional year for Gibson. This has a transitional neck tenon route, but actually has the short neck tenon. So this is a very rare opportunity that you guys get to see a short neck tenon within a guitar. I thought that was kind of cool. And to end things off here, our little jazz master ukulele. In case you missed this episode because you're like, a uke? I don't want to watch that. I actually had my sister do a portion of this video, so maybe check that out if you'd like. It was just meant to be a fun episode, but it probably would have been a no upload day had I not done this video anyways because I was low on time. So fun little episode if you want to check it out. Fun little uke. I'm sure there's better ones for 200 bucks, but they're not shaped like a jazz master.
Thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in to this Boxing Unboxing episode. Don't forget to visit Donner's Amazon page and comment your favorite item in their shop for a chance to win a mystery item from them. And thank you to Donner for sponsoring today's episode. Take care.